Godolphin Lifetime Care is one of the world's biggest organisations dedicated to the aftercare of the thoroughbreds who've raced in their distinctive royal blue colours. Whether they've been horses that didn't succeed on the track or Group 1 stars such as Hartnell, it's always important to look at their endeavours in trying to rehome every horse. I caught up with Hartnell's rider Shirley Patterson as she brought him to Sydney for his first Royal Easter show. One thirty two seventy three. The first time they've ever broken one thirty three at the mile here, the famous mile at Royal Rearwick. Shirley, it's a, it's an exciting time, isn't it? The first Sydney Royal for Hartnell, such a popular racehorse. How's he found the whole experience? He's been quite well behaved. Uh, first thing about it, each time he comes back to his box, his head goes straight in his feeder. In the morning when I come back over, there's no food, no hay, nothing left. It's quite big compared to where he has been to Adelaide and Melbourne Royal. He's done himself proud, he's done me proud. Today we had the Pope Cup. Atmosphere was fairly big, um, big class, and he just got a bit anxious with it and just couldn't handle it that much, but he didn't disgrace himself, and it's just a learning curve. So, uh, as I said, he comes back to his box and his head's straight in the feeder, so couldn't ask for anything else. Coming from Victoria, it is quite a process, isn't it, to, to get a horse to any show around the country? It is, yeah. I mean, you've got to qualify for the Royals, um, which we've done. So you go around to your agricultural shows, hoping to get a win, to qualify for Sydney. Same with Adelaide and Melbourne. Um, then it's the long drive up here. Uh, I just wanted to bring him up here for a lot of people that hadn't seen him since he'd been retired from racing. Um, also because he's, he's mainly from up here with Godolphin as well, so uh, I just thought it'd be not a good idea to come up. He had a bit of a fluff up today, but that's just one of those things, you just got to work through it. He's, not, he's no different to any other horse. They're all, they're all entitled to do it, so yeah. Well, touching on his racing career, he's by an English Derby winner authorised, so he's a Dali Godolphin product through and through, and Godolphin maintain ownership of their ex racehorses but Reg Fleming, of course, is his custodian, and, and Shirley, you look after him day to day, so it works really well, doesn't it, that you you can do what you like with him, but you, you know that Dali is supportive of whatever you do. Yeah, it's great, and I mean, with Reg being his custodian, or guardian which is wonderful and me to be involved with him was through Reg because I've known Reg for a long long time we've had a few horses other horses together uh, Reg sees him most times because we're still based in Flemington um, we're based off course and I'm pretty much with him 24 7 he's the first horse I see in here every morning when I walk through the gate at 3 a.m. Uh, sometimes earlier as soon as he hears the gate, he starts yelling out and screaming because he knows it's food time. You just feed him and then he's as happy as Larry for the rest of the day. And Hartley's is going to make every single yard, sticking his tongue out at his rivals to win the Bahrain Trophy. Well, he was a group enlisted winner in the UK. His first run in Australia, he was second to stablemate contributor in the Group 1 shipping Norton Stakes. I mean, he had an incredible ability to acclimatise in his racing career. And I guess, you know, the, the getting his head down in the feed bin and, and being able to just eat no matter what, that's a big part of, of having a healthy, happy horse no matter what they do, isn't it? It is. Uh, it's, it's what you want to see. Um, been really lucky with him. That's all he does. He's really happy to eat. So, and I mean, to travel up from Melbourne, it's a long drive, but he got off the float straight in his box and straight into his feed. So you can't ask for any more than that. I mean, but he's, he's travelled the world. Uh, he's state to state to race and everything like that. So, I mean, you know, I'm just lucky to have him or be a part of his life. Uh, and I know Reg appreciates it so much from Godolphin's point of view as well. But Hartnell will take out the BMW. He won the Sky High. It was only his third start in Australia. He won the Rose Hill Autumn Weight for Age Championship, the BMW. And it's really interesting. These horses with this natural ability, can you see that transfer? You know, just having, whether it be brain, physique, uh, interest in his food, does that sort of transfer now to what he does? That, that everything that made him a good racehorse, I guess that will help him in his future life? Yeah, look, 
look, it does. I mean, everything he'd done when he was racing was 110%. It's the same now, trying to, you know, to get him to come back and relax and everything like that. But he's always on a mission, no matter what you do. So he hasn't really changed that much. And I mean, it's the same at home. When he's finished working, he still goes and has his role after he's been unsaddled. So, like, a lot of things is, is still the same as what he was getting in his racing life. It's just, uh, it's, just it's tremendously exciting. And, uh, look, you know, I'm sure his Zainer Sheikh Mohammed would be very proud of one of the best horses he's ever raced in Australia to win a, a time-honoured Randwick Mile. How's the wear and tear on a horse that's had, you know, a lot of starts, but I guess any 13-year-old horse is going to take some sort of managing? Do you know, Caroline, his legs are clean. It's a testament to Godolphin and their staff, the way they do look after their horses. But for a horse that's been raced on both sides of the world and he's, he's raced into his later stages as well, his, his legs are just unbelievable. There wouldn't be that many that you, you'd find with as good as leg as what, legs as what he has. Uh, and he, as, as in his body as well, he's still, you can still see his muscle and his definition. Uh, he's just got a bit fatter, which is, which is good. But he carry out, carried over from his racing into, he, into his new career, so yeah. Well, he had 13 wins but 14 placings and they were in the elite races. I mean, they included his uh, famous placings to the Mighty Mare Winks, including in two Queen Elizabeth stakes in Sydney and a second to Winks in the Cox Plate. He was third in the 2016 Melbourne Cup, but his popularity seemed to really increase through those battles, even, you know, maybe more so the races that he didn't win. And there's obviously a lot of interest in Hartnell now as he's transitioned to a new life isn't there? There's so much interest in him and there has been since I've had him like you'd be out somewhere and they'll say oh you've got Hartnell how's he going blah 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 and really like um, seeing him on Facebook and different things like that with posts not only on my page but in like Racehorses Australia and posts like that pages like that I should say um, and everyone still asks about him and we were here the other day and I was working him and there was a elder gentleman on the side of the arena and uh, he found out who he was and I walked over and he gave him a pat and he was nearly crying. He said, you know, he, he followed him when he was racing. Um, it's just a big thrill to be able to have a look at him, to stand here and watch him while he's working. And I said, well, you can pat him if you, and you can have a photo with him if you want. And he was just, he's so overwhelmed with it. And it sort of put a lump in my throat. You just, it, that's what he's still doing to people. And that's why I've always said all along, he gets under your skin. It's, it's hard to say how, but he just gets under your skin and in, he's in your blood. Uh, and he still does that. Like, there's so many people that still ask about him, what he's up to, how he's going, where's he going next. So, yeah, no, it's great. And he won champion breed at Equitana in Melbourne. So he's done a really good job already. And, and of course, the first class on Good Friday, we filmed him out at the Sydney Royal as well. And the RAS has done such a great job with this thoroughbred day, haven't they, on Good Friday? They have, yeah, they've, they've put on a great day. Uh, it's great to see, like, the, the Pope Cup was a massive class. So many beautiful thoroughbreds in there. Uh, new, like, new season, there's also season ones in there. So it's it's... It was great and it was a big atmosphere and yeah, I mean he's, he's not the only one that fluffed up, that's just, that's part and parcel of it. It's no different to anyone else, you just take it as it comes and work through it. That's it and they learn, don't they, for the next time. But, but just explain to racing people who don't understand the show scene, what are the judges looking for? I mean we know he was a, a champion racehorse, you don't win $7.4 million without being elite, but it's about how they cope as we've talked about. But it is a big deal I guess to, to get them to transfer that into a, a totally different life. What, what are the judges looking for in a thoroughbred? Is it their physique? Is it, it Obviously temperament's a big part. Yeah, temperament, physique, uh, going forward, under saddle, movement, moving forward is what, like getting over the ground. Um, their looks, it's, it's everything. And what is it that you think makes thoroughbreds excel off the track? What do you, you've obviously, you know, worked with a lot of thoroughbreds. What do you love the most about them? They're all different. So you, one day you've, you've got them and the next day, you, you know, they might be in a different sort of a mood. Um, they don't all come off the track and, you know, quiet and they're in the show ring in a week's time. Some take a lot, lot more time than others, um, but it's just, I, I suppose sometimes it's just the challenge that really I like. And yeah, just sort of different horses, different times. 
anyone taking on a thoroughbred that might not know much about the breed, what, what's sort of some of the best advice that they should have if they're transitioning them to a new activity? If they don't know a lot, I would be getting them to ask some people for advice that actually know what, you know, know what they're talking about. If they need help, ask for it. Don't go on and do it yourself um, because you could cause not only injury to the horse but yourself as well. You need, you need, if you don't know much, you need someone to help you. Simple as that. So a lot of them won't make it to whether it, whatever discipline that, you know, that they're going for, but a lot of them will as well. So there's, there's good and bad, but you need to know where they are. They might just have to retire in a, in a paddock or something, but that's just, that's life. They're still getting looked after. As I said, he is a very popular horse, Hartnell. How would you describe his personality? He can be a naughty little boy sometimes, um, cheeky, loves cuddles though, so he's, he's probably more sook than anything. But at the same time, he's sort of, he's loud and proud, you know. He walks into somewhere, if you're taking him for a walk, he's like, if there's people around him, make sure that they know he's there. That's great. And so what's next on the agenda? What are you looking for sort of for the rest of this year with Hartnell? What would you like to achieve with him? So the show season's finished now after Sydney Royal. So he will go home, go back to Melbourne and then he'll go for a spell for a month or so, six weeks or something. And then it's all back into it again to start qualifying for next year's Royal Shows. It's just fun, isn't it? I mean, having these off-track thoroughbreds, there's so much fun to be had, isn't there? There is. Uh, and like, there's, there's so many things that they're able to compete in um, these days. Like you've got your, your lead and your ridden, whether it be hunter or open hacks and things like that. There's always parades. There's, I mean, we've done a couple of things with Hartnell that people get to meet. They understand, you know, what happens after they've retired and get to see them. Like you've got living legends back home as well. So a lot of retired thoroughbreds there, the older thoroughbreds. As I said, you know, he gets under your skin and he knows, he knows that as well. So, but he is, he loves his carrots. He loves a kiss and a cuddle. But then other times you can walk in the box and he's like, no, I don't want to see you at the moment. So it's, you do what you've got to do with him and then just leave him alone and he's happy.